Jason. Thank you so much for joining me on the Well Vegan Travel Podcast. Hi there, Bridie. It's great to be here. So we're going to be talking today about a destination in the Caribbean that we have not yet done a podcast about, and that is St. Lucia. And Jason, you're going to talk about a recent trip that you made to St. Lucia and a particular place in St. Lucia that you thought was interesting to share. But before we talk about that, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do in the vegan space? Yeah, thanks, Brady. So I've been a vegan now for the last three years, vegetarian beforehand, and I really enjoy making different recipes, trying different recipes, veganizing different recipes, sharing them with my friends, my family, people online. I also really enjoy traveling and going to these like kind of unique places throughout the world. And recently just being able to find really fun, veg friendly places, and then ideally being able to share them with other people. Fantastic. Well, why was it that you decided to go to St. Lucia as a destination? So St. Lucia, we, we were kind of trying to find somewhere that was a little quieter and something that was kind of like off the beaten track a little bit. And I was having a big birthday as well. So we wanted to celebrate that. And to be honest, I've never been to a Caribbean island before. So I thought, hey, this is a great time to be able to do that. So a good friend of mine, he's from St. Lucia, he recommended it and did a little bit of research. And then I found this resort in Chastanay and we really liked it. And we thought, hey, we got to go to this spot. So yeah, and then we ended up being there earlier this year. And what was it about this particular resort in St. Lucia that made you think, yeah, that this is the place? The big thing for me was it had a vegan restaurant and they had a lot of vegan options on their menu. One of the owners, she turned the main restaurant into a vegetarian restaurant about six years ago. And then about two or three years ago, she made it fully vegan, which I really respect. And I thought, this is something I want to support. And this is a place that I want to go to. All the food looked delicious online. So that was the big push for that. It was also a smaller resort too. So we thought we didn't want to get lost in the crowds. We want to be able to have some space and be able to enjoy ourselves. So we thought a small independently owned resort would be nice. We also learned about the snorkeling and the scuba diving, which is like right on the beach in Chastanay. I love snorkeling. So that really sealed the deal. Like those three things really sealed the deal. Why we wanted to go. Fantastic. So you hopped on a plane and you went to St. Lucia and you're going to be talking about five reasons why people should consider this island and this resort in particular. So I'll hand it over to you. Why don't you tell us your first reason? The first reason was all the food. So I come from like a food background. I love cooking. I love eating and I love trying different foods. So the fact there was a vegan restaurant there was fantastic. They have their own vegan chef who, uh, if you take their vegan cooking class, you get to meet Chef Frank, really great guy. They have four or five different restaurants throughout the resort. All of them had vegan or vegetarian options, which is really cool. And if you like, you can also get, uh, sorry, my cat's here. It's okay. Oh, how cute. <laughs> How cute. <laughs> One really cool thing was that after our vegan cooking class, the chef said, if there's anything on the menu you want to try or anything you want us to make or do for you, just let your server know and we can try to whip that up. So he made a really good vegan ceviche, which is typically seafood, but he had like coconuts, flesh, and then all the different fruits as well, which was fantastic. So being able to have that was great. So that would be my first reason as to why I go. And it'd be great for anybody who's also a bit of a foodie too, because all the food is really good, whether you're on the beach or in the restaurant, it's all really good. Was this an all-inclusive resort? Primarily it was. They had different options. So I think they had options where it can be a la carte, or you can have like your breakfast and your dinner included, or you can have it all inclusive. Yeah. So they have and at least three different options. Yeah. And was the full, the all-inclusive what you went for? It was, yes, it was. Mm -hmm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so interesting because all-inclusive resorts have the reputation as not being very vegan friendly. Generally speaking, yeah. there's often a lot of buffets and yeah. in the spirit of being hospitable, there's often, you know, 
a little bit of meat in every single salad you could possibly imagine. So this is yeah. really a bit of a game changer. And I'm, like I was saying, I'm really surprised that I had not heard of this place. I mean, it's just so cool. So you really enjoyed the ceviche. What, what was the vibe of the food? Was it like gourmet sort of fine dining or is it more mm. casual? It was a little bit of both, like whether you're down at the beach, you know, just getting food to your cabana. That was delicious, easy going kind of food down by the beach. Or you can be up at one of the restaurants and it's all like kind of fine dining and very nice. They also have afternoon tea, which was really delicious and kind of fancy. There's a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of everything. My wife treated me to a dinner on the beach, the two of us. So that was quite fancy, which was wonderful for my birthday. Yeah. So a little bit of, a little bit of everything. Yeah. So a question I maybe should have asked you at the beginning was, would you mind sharing the cost per night of this accommodation? Just so our listeners can get a sense of, you know, is it like a really, really fancy, like $5,000 a night kind of place? Or is it like a, you know, I'm guessing $400 is kind of like an okay price for a fully inclusive that's quite nice. I literally have no idea because I don't usually stay in them. But if you wouldn't mind sharing... Yeah, no problem. So the great thing is that they have different deals that go on throughout the year. So depending on what time of year you go, you might have like 20% off, I think up to like 35% off. So my wife and I were able to get a pretty good deal. I want to say about um, $800 a day there per person, $700, $800 per day. And that's for the all-inclusive. So the other options are going to be probably a little cheaper too. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So amazing vegan food. That is yeah. awesome when you're going to a resort where there's often not a lot of good options around. What is the second reason why you think vegans should head to this place in particular? So it is the sea life and the different fish. And I saw turtles, octopuses. You can see manta rays. Um, and just for someone who really appreciates animals and being around animals, especially when they're in their natural habitat, it was really special to be able to go down to the beach and you can really just walk out to the water. So you can just go out to the dock there, pop in the water and just start snorkeling around and start seeing a lot of these sea life, uh, which is really cool to see, especially someone who's from Canada and we don't have a lot of sea life here <laughs> in Ontario. So it's really wonderful to see, especially when they're in the coral reefs too. There's one significantly large coral reef that's by Anne So it was really interesting to be able to see the fish and all the other animals within the coral reef too, which is really cool. Yeah, I will say that I am a diver. When I say that I have my diving qualification, I haven't done that much diving, if I'm honest. And I initially learned like 20 years ago when I was living and working in Thailand and I wasn't vegan at that point. And then I didn't really go back to diving for quite a few years after going vegan and we went in Bali Seb and I went in Bali and the experience was just so much richer as a vegan mm. I think that I didn't really know that much about fish before and I'm certainly no fish expert but yeah. just you know seeing these animals just swimming right by me it's yeah. kind of like going on safari you know just seeing these yeah. incredible animals in this amazing environment is really special and you found that just even the snorkeling was really good there yes i did yeah yeah i found the snorkeling was really good and it's a fairly long coral reef along the wall there so even if you have other people there too i got a fair bit of room to be able to snorkel around i've heard from a few people that were also on resort too that the scuba diving is really good a lot of really good night diving oh. they've got a couple of really cool wrecks nearby too my wife and I, we don't scuba dive, but it definitely sparks some interest, though, for the future. I really enjoyed the snorkeling, though. It was really cool to see. I think this is a really, really awesome draw to be able to see wildlife when you're just, like, relaxing on the beach as well. It's really, really cool. Thank you. Okay, and tell us, what are the other reasons? The next reason would be that They've got a little bit of everything for everybody, basically. So whether you're going down the Caribbean, just be able to relax, have a pina colada and kick your feet up. That's an option. If you want to be active throughout your trip, they've got options there. Or you can do a little bit of both as well. My wife and I are more active kind of people. So whether it's the snorkeling, the scuba diving, they had like stand up paddle boards, which was a lot of fun. And the bay actually is pretty calm too. So it's very easy to be able to paddle around in the bay, 
they've got small sailboats too, like hoppy cats you can take out, which was a little adventurous at times. There was one time actually we had difficulty turning the boat around. So we did a couple turns in the boat to be able to try to get ourselves back into shore. But luckily we made it back. <laughs> There's a little bit of like anxiety, a little bit of like a little bit of panic there. But like, I don't want to get lost at sea. <laughs> but luckily we made it back. Um, and then so they've got like, if you're into tennis, they've got tennis courts. They've got a really nice yoga studio right by the beach. So they have yoga daily. And I'm someone who really enjoys yoga. So being able to do yoga by the water as the water's waving in and back was really uh, uh, very calming and very nice. Uh, so they've got that. Oh, and also um, they have nature walks too with their naturalist. His name is Menno. He's very smart guy, very approachable, very nice guy. And he grew up in St. Lucia on the island and he's a very knowledgeable person. So I'd recommend if you get a chance to also do a nature walk with Menno. I love this. I will tell you that Seb is not a big beach person, so he needs some activities. Yeah. Personally, he would be, I think he would really, really enjoy this as a potential option. Hmm, what else does this wonderful place have to offer? Yeah, so if you want to relax a little bit more, they've got the different cabanas that are on the Anshasane beach. I would say probably about maybe 30, 30, 35 cabanas or so. They've got like beach service, so you can get drinks and you can get food right there. It did get kind of hot, so we were able to hop in the water if you got too hot. So that was really nice. They've got a spa there. We received massages while we were there, which is really nice. That was just a little complimentary thing that they gave us, which was great. And they've got like a nail salon too, which is really interesting, which my wife did. And they've got a lot of like on the relaxing side of things. And then obviously you can do a little bit of both too. If you like, yeah, you can really just spend all day down by the beach, you know, finding your favorite drink and having a veggie burger and fries or whatever your fancy is. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Gosh, I can imagine as I live on the West Coast, so it's not nearly as cold in the winter time as for you out East. So I could imagine this week, were you away for a week or two weeks? Mm. Week? Yeah, we're away for a week. Yeah. Yeah. It was just such a welcome respite from the oh winter i cannot it, imagine it really was and it was something where i was just like i need to do this again and again <laughs> yeah yeah i'm sure i'm mm -hmm. sure so what about excursions does the resort offer some excursions around st lucia so that you're not just stuck in the resort the entire time yeah they do they have some shopping excursions in the neighboring to free town and they also do hiking up the two patons. They've got the Petit Paton and the Grand, Grand Paton. That's relatively close. So you can hike up to the top of the Paton. And then it's kind of cool. You can see the shore and all the beach and the island. Because the island's primarily made up of dormant volcanoes. They've got some really interesting peaks and really interesting climbs to the top of that, which is cool. If you're feeling adventurous, they also have a helicopter tour you can do too, which is pretty interesting. We decided since we were close to the water that we want to do a couple of boat tours. They've got both a relaxing boat tour and also more of a adventurous boat tour. Since we had the opportunity, we did a little bit of both. The first one was really interesting. It was very picturesque and very romantic. It was a jazzy champagne boat tour. So you do a three hour tour and they have their own saxophone player who's on the boat with you. Uh, they give out champagne and they had a nice little vegan plate for us with some like vegan sushi and some samosas and some fruit and stuff like that. So uh, gave us a chance to be able to enjoy the music, enjoy the sunset, have some quite a bit of champagne and also the delicious food. That was really fun to be able to do that. And that was a great way to be able to just settle into the start of the week. Uh, a couple of years later, we did the dolphin and whale tour. And this was really interesting. And you mentioned being on safari earlier on. I kind of felt like I was on safari when I was on the boat because we would get out into the open water and there'd be like a couple dolphins that you'd see kind of coming beside us. And then a couple more. And then the boat would pick up speed a little bit more. And then a couple more, a couple more. And then we turned around to the harbor. And I felt really lucky because we had multiple pods coming towards the boat. We saw blue nose dolphins, we saw spinner dolphins. And all these wow. dolphins were just kind of merging in on this one general location and they were following the boat. So it was really cool to be able to see these very like majestic and coordinated and incredibly 
strong animals swimming alongside our boat. Yeah, so that was really interesting. Wow. So is this a common occurrence? They don't feed the, the dolphins, I would hope. <laughs> no, they don't. No, <laughs> they don't. That is a good question. Our captain was saying that they always see dolphins on the tour, but it's not typically this many dolphins. They might see 20 or 30 dolphins, perhaps. But I would say at least 75 to 100 dolphins. Like, it feels like it's just multiple pods were coming together. But he was saying that you do always see dolphins. So. And then sometimes you can see whales, too, there. Oh, my goodness. This just yeah. sounds paradise. As you were talking about that boat ride as well, I couldn't help but think that this is an incredible honeymoon destination also. Oh, yeah. Really, yeah. really just sounds incredible. And seeing dolphins and whales like that is incredible. I had a very interesting experience. I wasn't anywhere warm. I was actually in the UK and we did a boat ride and I was absolutely floored when we were on a boat ride and a group of porpoises came and followed the boat for a few kilometers. And it really is quite magical when that happens. I never would have expected that to happen in yeah. the UK, but <laughs> there we go. All right. Awesome. What other kinds of excursions are offered or are available there or in the vicinity? Yeah, so they have local sulfur springs. They have their mud tours. So you can go and you can get a mud bath in a way. You can see they have the Diamondback waterfall. So you can hike up there. I think like they're relatively close to the other. So you can kind of like do a bit of a, an afternoon trip doing both those trips together. Yeah, the big thing really is like the hiking to the Batons. Oh, and then also it's not so much of an excursion, but I really enjoyed our vegan cooking class that we had. That was really fun. And we were lucky, just my wife and I, that were signed up for that, which was fantastic. It felt like a private cooking class. So we had a, a three course meal and we got to help out with the cooking, which was a lot of fun. And Chef Frank, he's the vegan executive chef there. And he was just fantastic when it comes to just helping us learn more about the area. And he was also mentioning that they have their own local farm where they get most of their produce from. And they also grow cocoa beans there too. So they make their own chocolate as well, which is also very interesting. Wow, that is fun. Is St. Lucian food available at the resort? I have no idea what St. Lucian food mm. is. I'm guessing St. Lucian is the right adjective. Is that correct? I think so. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm wondering, did they use any particular ingredients? You might not know the answer to that. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. There's a lot of like cinnamon. There was a lot of seafood, as one could imagine, being in a Caribbean location. So there was a lot of really interesting twists on seafood based foods, a lot of like local produce, like fruits that were available. The juices were really good. I feel like cinnamon and spices were a lot of the prominent spices that were there. Amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. And you mentioned that you have bird watching tours. There were bird watching tours there too? There was, yeah. So you would go out with Menno, who was the naturalist, and you can walk around the resort area there, which is quite a large area. And it's great because they'll be able to point out different kind of birds, different migrating birds, birds that might not be there, but will be migrating at a particular point within the year. And yeah, so for anybody who enjoys going on bird watching tours, it's a very picturesque, I'm very insightful tour with Menno. Fantastic. Wow. It's so nice that at a resort you're getting to see so much wildlife. It's, it's really incredible. Yeah. All right. And what about the fifth reason to check out this resort? Mm. Yeah. So this is an important thing for me too. It's a very small resort. It's independently run. It has 49 different rooms throughout the resort. All the rooms are individually made. They're all unique within each other. And one thing I really enjoyed about it is that I know with our room and then with other rooms as well, from what we heard from other people, is that each room has a really nice view either of the beach or of the batons, which is really nice. So we kind of wanted a place where that was uh, quieter and also not as busy too. So that was a really big, big draw for us too. It was really nice and just picturesque and very comfortable. It just sounds Amazing. I'm sold. I really would love to check this place out. Now, you mentioned to me that you did something kind of interesting and unique, which was you were a flight volunteer when you came back to Canada. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was about, what being a flight volunteer is and, and how that all played out? Because I'm sure this is something many vegans would be interested in. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. This is like one of the best parts of our trip. Okay. So it was the night before. We're going to be checking out in the morning. My wife saw a poster saying, if you're going to be on one of these flights, whether it's like Air Canada or United, and you're interested in being a puppy flight foster parent for the trip home, give us an email and we'll see if we have a puppy who is looking for a flight companion back to Toronto. So we emailed them and they emailed us back in 20 minutes or so. And they had everything set up when it comes to the paperwork to be able to um, bring our puppy through customs and onto the plane. So they met us at the airport the following day and they had a 12 week old puppy. His name was Geppetto and he was great. We got him through customs and we got him through security and he just kind of slept on my lap while we we're waiting for the plane. I was able to have him in his carrier, like either on my lap or by my feet while we're on the plane, flying it back home. And then we met Geppetto's new adopted parents at Pearson Airport at the arrival gate. That was one of the really nice things too, is that I was able to see, you know, them meeting for the first time and them being able to grow their family as well, which is really nice with their new dog. It sounds like this is something that they do for anybody going to Pearson or different locations throughout Canada, as well as the United States too. Okay, I am really shocked that they managed to organize everything so quickly. So you reached out to them the evening before you were departing. I am shocked <laughs> that it all came <laughs> together so quickly. <laughs> yeah, they were really professional. They had all the paperwork ready. They were able to answer any of our questions because it's something that we didn't think about beforehand. We're just like, oh, we saw this poster and thought, hey, let's see what happens. Let's sign up and see what happens. They had everything ready, all the paperwork ready by the following morning seven o'clock the following morning yeah that is incredible yeah. Yeah. yeah and the organization that you contacted for about this was called oh so it's called help pause i think it's helppause.com so that's a locally run volunteer group within saint lucia yeah it's really interesting there are a lot of organizations that are looking for flight volunteers and there are a lot in thailand for example there's a lot of dogs that need homes in Thailand specifically and there are a lot of different organizations but I don't really know about other places in the world I think it would be so good if there was like a a hub where anyone who wanted to help these dogs could go and they could plug in like oh I'm going to St Lucia I wonder if there are any organizations there I don't think that exists if that does exist someone please let me know because I would love to <laughs> talk about and promote that that is really 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 cool You've talked about these five reasons to go to this resort. Are there any other bonus tips that you have to share? Okay, so I love coffee and the coffee there was absolutely delicious. It's something where whenever I try to go to different places throughout the world, I always try coffee because it always tastes a little different. And it's really interesting how different cultures make coffee or serve coffee. Um, so it's called Green Gold Coffee. And if you like coffee, I would highly recommend trying it. I had two or three cups at least every day. So yeah, that would be my bonus tip for going to St. Lucia. Amazing. And you very kindly given us some photos. Did you take these? I did, yeah. So my wife and I took them, either a mirrorless camera or on our iPhone, yeah. yeah. Jason, thank you so much for taking the time to share with our listeners this resort, this really interesting destination. Before we go, if people would like to see what it is that you're doing in the kitchen, would you mind telling us what your Instagram handle is and if there are any other social media platforms that people can connect with you? Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram at This Plant Kitchen. My name is Jason Bull, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have about the vegan food. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, no problem. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, Brady.